This episode is brought to you by TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com is your all access to culture. Check out cultural merchandise like leggings, hats, mini boxing gloves and bags. Also t-shirts like hip-hop, nature, rock bands, reggae and dark fantasy. Fast shipping worldwide. That's TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com Now let's check out this episode. I live now 73 for England and so I from that day, I started traveling backward and forward to, to England because um, when I finished my tour in England, 73, I went back to Jamaica and some promoters sent for the Jamaica Showcase, which consists of me, Dennis Brown, um, a guy called Al Brown, Sly. Sly at that time, Sly was playing with, with, with um, Light Parks as, as, as his bass man. The band, the band was called Skin, Flesh, and Bone. Okay, so this like, was before Sly and Robbie. Yeah, it was Sly, Sly and Light Parks because um, they they were playing in 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 a club, on the Reddish Road called Tit for Tat. Mm-hmm. So they were they were a resident band in that club, and the name of the band was Skin, Flesh, and Bone. Mm-hmm. Also on that tour was um the Metals, um Cynthia Richards. You know, so it was a big package going into England. It was called the Jamaica Showcase. That was a, a young Dennis Brown. The first time Dennis Brown is flying out of Jamaica as well. Wow. And you're on the show. And he's he's basically the youngest one out of all of you guys going on this tour to England. Yes, because I can tell you another um, part of it too. When, when Dennis Brown came to Studio One, I was actually the one looking after him. Because Dennis Brown had made a song for Derek Harriet called Lips of Wine. Mm-hmm. And um, at, it, 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 his name was established yet. So when he came to Studio One, mm-hmm. I I was there before him and I was, I always have a, a, a little um, couple of dollars in my pocket, you know, so because um, I need to eat and whatever. And I would, by lunch with Dennis at your time, you know, our lunch is consists of one one chop and spirit bone, yeah. a Pepsi, and we're nice. You understand? <laughs> right? So that this was a continuous thing. And it, anyway, I go, I used to take Dennis Brown with me as a youth. You know, we we used, I used to carry him by um Kingston 13, Walton Park Road here, Burton Avenue. And sometimes me and him and the Eptones would drive out and go to the, the, the driving cinema out by Arborview. Mm-hmm. And we were just um, friends, you know, going everywhere. You know, so when I came to England with him in 1974, you know, I was more or less like a, a, a guardian to him, mm-hmm. you know. But That's it, crazy. It, what, what actually I'm... Um, Give him the spark now. Is when he did the song called No Man is an Island, a studio one, mm-hmm. right? And Alton did write a tune for him to call If I Follow My Heart, you know, because Alton had a nice circle guitar there, and Dennis Brown would borrow the guitar and ask Alton to show him a, a few cards and things, and Alton would show him, mm-hmm. you know. So sometimes Alton would come looking for his guitar and can't find it. You know, and he, was, he would just shout, where's that little boy? <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's then it's habit. And when, when, um, when Sleepy Harris and he came to, mm-hmm. you know, Harris did a, a, a song called You Got to Be Sure of a Woman's Love. Mm-hmm. You know, and that that elevated him as well. You know, and he, he used to borrow the guitar sometime from Dennis and strump it, you know. Mm-hmm. But these are really early days in, in, the, in the business. In the business. Okay, so before we even get to you going to UK, because I know there's a lot of stuff that happened before you even got there. What was your first hit you got out of Studio One? Is that song called Nanny Version? Mm-hmm. Okay, so right. it's the first song you recorded became a hit. Yes, yes. Because i tell you something. Mm-hmm. When I record that song, I went downtown one evening and one of my friends drove up on a van mm-hmm. and I asked him if he's going my way. And he says, yes. So I said, um, I asked him for a lift. I jump in the van, in, in the back of the van with, with some him, with him, some America as them. And I heard this guy talking, mm-hmm. saying, 
you hear you were a new record. Mm -hmm. So by this time I don't know what record he's talking about. So anyway, he said to the guys, um, you are a new record, but it's called nanny version, right? <laughs> and I'm 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 there thinking to myself, wait, mm -hmm. this guy hear the record already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and said to the guy, this is the new new tune where you were I make nanny version, but that was my my song. Right, but I didn't make them no wiser. I just sit there and enjoy the ride home. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, that tune was a was a hit from day one, you know, because it, it was on um, the nanny goat with him with with Larry and Alvin. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichunt.com. <laughs>